Hello there, everybody. Welcome back to episode 27 of Firemind. So, what can I say today? I have, at first, the very first thing for you, a stairwell that will turn from a well into a water splotch. Well, it is just what we need to finish the stairwell here, and I figured it is going to look that fun that I want to start out the episode today. There were a lot of things that we had to do last episode, but most importantly, we were trying to do trade with our homelands, and the amount of iron we got in was really, really disappointing, to, to put it into friendly words. So... We are now struck with a problem that we do need to get ourselves somehow a better income of iron. Which is, I don't know, it's going to be really, really difficult. Why is this blocked at this location? Seriously. Ah, well. Well, let's see. Stairway, uh, stairway building is always a little bit... Uh, complicated at times, but luckily DF hack can just work around that. But I don't know what the hell we are... We have ordered here. I am a little bit insecure, as actually we should have tons of these materials. I don't know what I'm trying to order, but we got really more than enough granite, as you see here. So this shouldn't be happening. There we go. Good oh, we have our glassmaker finally doing his uh, mysterious construction. I've got a pretty good idea how we're going to help the caravan people as soon as that's a thing. And well, for those of you who weren't around the last time, the caravan has decided to take a tour over the Scourge. A smart person in my Discord meant that I should have built that road through the Scourge in the first place. Never were other people more right than this time. But we are going to do this the Dwarven way, and we are going to dwarf our way through this. So, let's show you what I'm talking about. We don't want a coal here, and I want to have... The construction that white. Go. Now we're going to just move our way through the mountain this time because I figured, you know, we got already so much action on this uh, fort with. Um. Wait a sec. With the uh, surface level uh, stuff, so I felt like let's do a wee bit of. Uh, Psych. Oh, this is not deep enough. A wee bit of subterrain connection because, well, that's something that we obviously do need as well as our traders are quite stubborn as it seems. I don't mind. They are dwarves after all. There's a new wave of people coming in. I didn't hear the sound of the new migrant wave. Oh well. Whatever. We got, therefore, new people, uh, new animals to pasture in. So, I'm a little bit disorganized today, please forgive me. I also will go for more cavern installations today, as we have now finally drilled a hole through this entire thing here, so it goes all the way there. By the way, needs granite flooring. So, with that uh, thing we did at the beginning of the episode, we have now completely gotten ourselves a uh, good logistical access to the uh, cabin layers. What I want to start with today is I want to connect these parts first off, as these are really, really important to us. So this is going to be your base camp. This region down there will be the uh, area where we work with the Forgotten Beasts, around the Forgotten Beasts, whatever, I don't know yet. So we're going to have to build something there. The plan will be that this will be the entrance point for the Forgotten Beasts, and we'll have an entrance point into the caverns for dwarves, though, at the... somewhere around this location. So the basic idea is pretty easy. Oh, wow, a glass earring. Oh, sorry, pretty easy 
we are going to live over here and as soon as there's the alarms blaring that a forgotten beast is coming on in we're going to lock down the entrance here and only leave the entrances down here open where we have constructed traps for the forgotten beasts so they get captured and then we can open up the civilian stuff again it's the best way how i know to keep ourselves safe here so uh, let's check back with that beautiful little thing there what do we have here eight thousand dwarf books but my appraiser is really bad wow a artwork of a mountain titan of the year one nuts so yeah these guys are obsessed with the history of the mountain range here i didn't expect that but that's exactly what uh, what it is. All right, so the statues of the weapons here are quite nice. Also decorated with some honors for our mayor, with some honors towards Duvukar, in case you're new to this, depicted as a rotting male dwarf. Mm. Those are the gods of our, uh, of our civilization, the deity of suicide and death. Never change, my friends. Never change. So, yeah, there's... Uh, this one could have uh, stayed a little bit longer in the oven, but whatever. It's okay. And we have, of course, a heavily decorated statue of the Baroness. Th to that point, she was still Baroness. <laughs> now she's a Countess. But that's another day's time. Okay, so I need to put my hotkey bag somewhere else. As you see, this one was really a lot of work. It's really put us through a lot of effort. And this one will be my new hotkey here. Boom. There it is. So, that is going to be okay. That is okay too. That one is no longer okay. I want to have this one here. So from time to time it helps to readjust my hotkeys. So, where are we now lore-wise? The Countess must be exhilarated. She must be really, really happy. We're going to install a proper living module in this area now. What I mean with living module is a dining hall, a little tavern, a barracks, everything you need to keep the monsters at bay. It's going to be located exactly between the... Um, Forgotten Beast Trap and the rest, so this is going to be our tavern, maybe. We're going to slap out a couple of pillars here. It's a tavern, no. Well, can we leave this for the dining hall? I suppose. Let's make this the dining hall. Ah, well, these look crap. We're going to keep this the tavern. Never mind me. Instead, we're going to make some nice-looking guest chambers. I do love inns with guest chambers, especially the inns where you have access to deadly areas. <laughs> well, so we're going to get ourselves a nice little dining hall carved out here as well. And then we require a barracks. All right. The merchants will be leaving. Yeah, that's very concerning. It seems as if the giant raven attacks on the um, on the ambassadors are making it impossible for them to go into diplomacy mode. That's the only explanation that I got so far, as this is not the very first time that a diplomacy mission just didn't happen. So this is doubly uh, horrible as we weren't able to order ourselves extra iron for the next time. This sucks. Well, it is as it is. The Savage Lions strike back again, bringing us pain and horror, not allowing us to do diplomacy. Well, to, to keep the narrative flowing, let's just say the uh, mountain home liaison was just shocked away by the monsters, and he ran away. He never reached the mount uh, the, the fortress. This would be a little bit hard to explain. So, this new area also comes with a lot of other benefits. Namely, that we are excavating a ton of new copper. So, 
I have come to a conclusion. I will do something I hate doing, but I will do it nevertheless. So we're going to create ourselves copper armor. Copper armor sucks, I know that, but it is still better than having my dwarves not equipped at all. Our iron stockpiles will not be sufficient for the creation of uh, armor ever. Like, nah. We're going to make use of the, the silver by making a squadron of like Warhammer wielders or something like that, because silver happens to be a really good weapon, uh, good mater weapon material for, for Warhammers. So that's how we're going to roll. I need to do something about the situation, and this is the best way I think we can do this. Look at that, just how quickly a new area for our city is emerging. So before we get ahead of ourselves, I want to install now that whole forging business. So we are going to do this as follows. There will be the legendary armorsmith only working be only be working here for a moment. And we're gonna bind these uh, armor jobs on this forge especially because I want to be sure that this is only being made by the best of the best. This is the some way how we can make sure that the gear won't be totally horrible. You know, it's, yeah, it's what I got to do. So let's see, copper gauntlet, helmet, we got the leggings not yet. So we still require boots. That's six items. I think I'm still lacking the shields, so... I could make shields out of wood. I have so much wood. Yeah, let's leave it like that. So let's check back with the gear. I always happen to forget something like I feel. So breast, leg, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right. So on this forge for a moment, we will establish the legendary weaponsmith. It's a, it's a way to do things. There we go. So these are specialized onto the uh, stop, on, on, onto the workstations. That's what I was trying to say. Ooh, I got no copper. And um, yeah, that's um, this way we will have a time this running, and then I'll be re-establishing this. So we need to no, I need to smelt malachite. Oh, sorry, my English is not Englishing too well right now because it's a tad bit complicated to do these things. So we're going to give ourselves a total amount of 200 copper bars. So I think we'll be getting there with that. Oh, we can also establish fresh, hot magma workshops. Let's do this. So I got already two forages. That's okay. And while all this is being made, let's get ourselves to a little bit in, of a speed up of that. By manually placing down these uh, jobs, I, I I get these to, to get the flow starting. There's uh, reasons. So there's an artifact axe lying around here. So I, I'm way too often too lazy to just um, assign artifacts to people, but I should should do this more often. <laughs> I'm well aware of that. But this game can be such a micromanagement of hell that I really try to keep focused. You know, it's really hard to stay focused in this environment. So I decided to make some sweet looking uh, Kintsugi style stuff here. In case you don't know what Kintsugi is, it is... Uh, oh! He finally made it! Uh, this is uh, patching out broken stuff with very valuable materials. It's a Japanese uh, thing. Usually you, you use gold for that. So, uh, praise be the miners. So that is really, really good. We're going to order iron bars, of course tin bars just like the last time but unlike the last time we're also going to go where is it don't 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 come on 
there. Uh, this could be at least alphabetically ordered. The longer you play with it, the more I I despise this. I I can't, I can't put it into different words. So we need um, Cassiterite. Cassiterite is the ore of tin. This way we can make ourselves a really, really nice production going there. And bronze production, that is. And was black bronze again. I think it was a mix in of gold, but I'm not sure anymore. Ah, well, you see, it's all a little bit difficult at times, but we are going to order ourselves some gold nuggets nevertheless, as they are pretty cool to work with, you know? So we got that. We don't want to order copper nuggets. We don't need these. So, yeah, I think we're good to go with that. What's your metal ore, by the way, dudes? Maybe we can order some of that, too. Still looking for it. Garnerite. Need to check out what that was. Tetrahedrite is another copper ore. Magnetite. So let's order some magnetite while we're at it. There we go. Maces and legwear. That's what this is uh, going to be requested. So with the armor suits that I've been ordering, by the way, I'm well aware of the fact that you can order breastplate and mail shirt to be worn together and you can wear leggings and graves together you just need to put them on the template manually and i'm i wasn't able to bother myself with that. as legendary dwarves are already absolute killing machines that don't really need that much of an extra thing so Oh boy, we are Dushi now, or however you do, Dushi. I need to check back for the pronunciation. My German brain isn't able to process correctly how that's pronounced. But either way, we are really another step further to awesomeness. So that means her dining room needs an upgrade. She needs now five chests and three cabinets. And three weapon racks and three armor stands. Good God, how am I supposed to get all these things into her apartment? Uh, well, one thing at a time. So uh, what we are going to do here with uh, the cool Kintsugi stuff is going to be in this fort, I'm going to run silver walls wherever I need to fix something, as I think this is going to be looking really awesome. I want those uh, gemstones, I want the copper, and the spots we etched that out will be replaced by cool looking silver walls. I dig that. Truly do. So, let's see. I mean, effectively, this is also upgrading the value of the rooms, meaning that you will have even a higher happiness buy these rooms because look there you wrist there's a finely crafted silver wall and well that's given them good mood i really love that the game works like that because this gives me personally a really big feeling of reward whenever i do stuff like that usually i'm often in games like these yeah i'm doing this only for myself this is not giving me any rewards and then I'm starting to feel a little bit dulled out by going too deep into details. Fortress doesn't do that to me, due to the fact that it is just valuable to do this. Alright, so we're going to do another little nifty thing here. I figured that we're even going to breach into the caverns here. There we go. Silver walls. Mm, beautiful. So we have a bit of a punch punching party with Achaia. Let's check back where that beast is. Yeah. So that's typical. Kaya's go nuts after a while. Damn, I'm so happy. We're now another step closer to nobility. So let's see. Her apartment will be darned cramped by now. That sucks a bit, but whatever. So her dining hall isn't good enough for her yet. So that comes really okay for me because that means 
we're just going to slap in another rack and another armor stand in there. It's not the trade depot. Why am I trying to tra click the trade depot all the time? Okay. I don't know what my fingers are up to, but they are clearly sabotaging me. Okay, so we got that down. We now need two more chests, right? And one more cabinet. Okay, this place is looking more and more like a dump pile. I must plan this next time a bit more spacious. I really underestimated that these apartments get upgraded and therefore have further requirements. Okay, that's been all dealt with, so what's left is to make this tad bit more beautiful, and we know Uzo, she's only taking engravings from the big bad boss of the engravers, so since they are old friends, sort of, she's, uh, he's also going to take that job. Alright, there is... well... Seelop came to Firemind very, very early. Okay, now we need to talk. How did that happen? Rek Rovodazin is dead. How did he die? So... There's still... Is there still a Kaya? fight going on? No, he's just sleeping it out. But how did that guy die now? So, it's really hard to tell. I could check back with the, um, where is it? Sparring combat. Here, so the man in question dead is Rek Rovodazin. So let's check back if we can find his, uh, Lost moments. Ah, this thing needs a uh, search bar so badly. So here, the Mark's Dwarf, Rek Rovodazin, is fighting. So the culprit here is a giant raven. Okay, as far as I can see this, this poor fool was uh, assigned and uh, onto uh, as a hunter. So basically, he he killed himself. Car will be pleased. So we are going to give this fella another nice sarcophagus and just hope that it was what I think it was. You see, hunting is a bad sport here in the vicinity and new people tend to have the idea that they can follow their um, old fashion their old crafts here and as you see here this is how you end how you end if you start hunting in fire mind so a really cool um proposition has been made towards uh, bone industry and i'm working towards that so basically there is so much bone going around here that somebody, I can't remember if it was Discord or the comment section, pointed out that we could absolutely do something with all the bone and all the muscles and whatnot. And I was like, yeah, considering that we have a death cult going on here, I felt a little bit ashamed that I didn't come up with that earlier. So we're working on that. Currently, there's still so much... Wait a sec. Is that thing is still alive? Is there something... Still attacking my my dude here? Let's see. If there's some bird still attacking my bloke. I, I can't tell if the siege engineer is still going on there, but this giant chaos seems to be still alive. Oh boy. It's now... It begins now that the first giant animals get their first names. So this monster now is named because it uh, killed a human it's still out there good chance that the uh, giant raven is uh, now also going to be a thing here and I, I i think we we did it now yeah there was an agitated kaya plaguing this guy boy that means if i got that all right we just had the uh one person here being constantly attacked, oh there it is, by a rogue Kea. 
and he constantly kept on passing out because of exhaustion. Jeez, these birds are annoying little buzzers. Wow. So we are getting more and more problems here. It seems as if we should consider trapping or or yard to get these darn birds under control. This is really getting uh, getting to a point where where it actually starts to be dangerous for the people of uh, of the fort. <gasps> oh, I I just realized there is an opening to the caverns. We cannot leave it like that. Good thing that I have a head on my shoulders. So here that was supposed to be just momentarily there we go so after that's being closed we're going to kintsugi this up again so the silver walls really look nice i think i did get a little bit distracted by all the death and mayhem around so this turns out to be way more of an issue than I anticipated, but, well, that's why I go into these biomes. Alright, let's dig out the rest of the copper, because I really think this is amazing. We can't use all that malachite. Let's get back to our forges and see how much of the work orders has been completed already. None. Amazing. So, Arith is not doing any of these jobs. Over here, none of these have been done either. Yeah, but now it has been assigned to be done. There's also a full flow of designators. Okay, okay. I just, I just was a little bit uh, impatient again. All right. So let's just hope that nothing bad will flow into the caverns for this moment while we're still open. Obokagle Spoken or Legendary Armorsmith is on it. I really must say I feel a little bit nervous if somebody with such talents is uh, doing such a dangerous mission. Yeah, I sent the Tavern Keeper instead. That's a great idea. All right, so it seems as if there is a lot of uh, annoyance on the uh, on the courtyard, as there are more and more Kaya bodies piling up on the ground. So let's see, the grave for the brave foolish hunter. There we go. And let's see, I think I ordered in between the episodes something cool. Let's see. I did order... Yeah, the statues of Nods are age years. You see, I, I did come up with the idea that it would really be cool if we'd having... Uh, statues that document how the people died. So I kind of like forgot how uh, our friend Dusim died. If somebody still knows, let me know. I know it was the first death of the fort, and it, was, and it felt quite tragic, but I, uh, for a moment, I, it eludes me how he died. But, uh, yeah, feel free to dump me that in the comment section. I I will be like, duh, how couldn't I remember? But it's okay. <laughs> it's just what, uh, what we have to bear for sometimes. So, you see, this is going to be the new road through the mountain. And I really sincerely hope that uh, the that this will be working on out as intended. All right. So this tomb here is by all means not efficient, but uh, it's it's going to be really awesome and uh, awe inspiring. So here we got to check back. Is this giant raven now named too? Oh huh, well. This thing is quite uh, wounded. I I really wonder how this uh, poor fella died. It seems as if he almost killed it, but weirdly enough, the kill didn't go into the account of the raven. That is what's really confusing me here a tad bit, but well, it is what it is. 
I also do notice that the game became quite a lot more laggy lately. This is, I think, because of all the agitated chaos just uh, doing their thing. But well, it's so just the price to pay, I guess. So, yeah, that's how you totally got to use your silver, right? All right, but uh, all in all, this location is now pretty much finished. Let's give this a silver wall here too. I mean, I could leave this uh, cavity open, but I don't feel like it. Jeez, time flies. I'm already at the 30 minute mark. I didn't expect to be that slow today, but whatever. So this will be our new, new traders route. I really sincerely hope that this will work on out better for them. But we'll see about that. If any, if anything, uh, it will be a opportunity for the traders to get underground faster and get into the safety of the fort also faster. I think this will be definitely a win, so I really won't mind. So there's a dead raven. <laughs> well, we'll be definitely ordering two statues of giant ravens while I'm outrowing this. My good friends, I thank you so, so much for being around with me. I hope you enjoyed this. I had a lot of questions, so comments down below, you know the drill. And uh, thumbs up would be really, really appreciate it too and feel free to uh, subscribe so let's see no we need to go for this check out the description box there is lots of cool things down there and if you are new to this you can also check out the links to the entire savage lands thing and you can also check out the links to patreon paypal and buy me a coffee and now i say thanks for watching yet again thanks for supporting the channel if you do and thanks for watching this video and i hope you come back next time too i gotta do some fancy raven statues see you there bye bye